Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Milio Photos Coffee Break. My name is Angela Andrew, and today we're going to talk about how to organize your Milio Photos library by date. And this is something a lot of people want to do, but with files in different folders and maybe things coming in from different sources, this can seem like a really overwhelming task. But I assure you, Milio makes it really, really easy. So we're going to start off by jumping into the app. And hopefully you guys can all see my screen. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat as we go through. If it's pertinent to what we're talking about at the moment, I'm happy to pause and explain, or if you need a little bit of further explanation, or if you have questions at the end, we'll have time for Q&A, for general Milio questions, photography questions and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and jump into Milio and talk about organizing by date. Um, the first thing that a lot of people think of is organizing by date by moving things into physical folders, which is something you absolutely can do. And I like, um, it's something that I do in my library for many things, but not everything ends up into the same file system because let's face it, we're not perfect as humans. Things don't always get where they absolutely need to be. So like when we talk about organizing by date and folders, let me just give you a quick look here. This is my main photos folder. And in this, I have years and decades. I can jump here into my 2024 and I have things in here by date. But these images are all from one camera. These are all from my big camera, things that I imported in from a camera memory card. And I have other pictures like things from my mobile phone that are in the Apple Photos folder. I have things that maybe people have shared with me that I maybe dropped into the Milo inbox. So there's a lot of different images and files and videos that can be scattered in different places. So Milio makes it really easy by automatically organizing things by date for you. So that's where the calendar comes in. This is what we call the life calendar. And it automatically puts all of your media into an organization by date, regardless of what folder it's located in. So then if I go here into 2024, I'm not only seeing pictures that I took with my big camera, I'm also seeing pictures that I took with my iPhone and other things that have been shared with me. So that's really, really helpful. Now, as we go ahead and dive into the calendar, you can go ahead and double click into a month and see everything from that month. You can go into a date, see everything from that date. And then if you need to go ahead and find a specific image, you can use these quick actions here at the top right to navigate around. So I can say, show me in the folder. That's gonna jump me straight to the folder where this lives on my hard drive. Or I can say, you know, if I'm browsing other places, you can say show in life calendar and it's gonna drop you right into that date. So there's some really great ways to navigate around and see what you have. Now you can always hit the back arrow here to go back up a level and go from, you know, we're in a month view. Here we're, um, actually I think this is the month view. And then we go back up here to our year and decade view. Um, from here, there's a few other options that you might wanna know about. And that's if you open up the info panel, and right now I have 2024 selected, I can say show all selected. And this works for selecting a year, a month, or a specific day. And I can say show all selected, and that's gonna show me everything in that time period that I have selected at that moment. So that's really kind of a cool thing to do. Now, let me go ahead and jump back here and let's take a look at some of the sorting options because there's different ways that we wanna interact and sort through our libraries. So I'm gonna go here to the more menu and you'll see we have a sort by option. And because this is a calendar, most areas are gonna be limited to the date created for the sort order, but you can choose ascending or descending. So if you're working on family history projects and you're mostly hanging out in those images from the past, maybe you don't want your most recent images to be the first thing you see here at the bottom, maybe you wanna switch that order. You can absolutely do that. So that's a couple of different ways that you can do that. Now, we're going to also talk a little bit about how you can choose what's showing up here on your calendar, because that's something that a lot of people say, you know what, where are these pictures coming from? These don't necessarily represent what I want to have on my calendar. So you can't select a specific picture to put on the calendar, but you can tell Milio how to prioritize things, and you can even hide things from your calendar. So let's talk about that photo prioritization. That's going to be set up here in our settings. And we're gonna go up here to the more menu, settings, and then we're gonna go into, I believe it's organization and photo prioritization. Now this controls a lot of different things inside your library 
One of them being how things are presented in your calendar. So the things at the top are going to be at the highest priority. And then you can reorder these things to a way that makes sense to you. So by default, and these two up here at the top are locked, so event priority and cover for priority events. This is when you set an event, which we'll talk about later. If you set it as a life event or an event of the month or an event of the year, those are gonna be the top level images that Mylio prioritizes for your calendar. Below that, you can say, I want five star images prioritized or ones that I've flagged with a pick flag. And you can go down and choose what you wanna have here. Um, you can say, I want tagged faces. So if you really want your library to be populated with the pictures of the people you love, go ahead and move tagged faces to the top of the list. And that's gonna pri prioritize images that have people in them. Um, you wanna see pictures that you've edited in Mylio? Drag that to the top of the list. So you can prioritize this in any way that you want. And you'll see here towards the bottom of the list, it's deprioritizing things that you've marked as rejects that don't have flags, labels, unrated, and so forth. So that hopefully gives you an idea of how you can prioritize what's showing up. You also have the option to use spaces to hide things. So if you've ever gone through and you've looked at some pictures, let's go ahead and jump into a picture, um, some pictures here. Just gonna go ahead and grab a cat picture here. Let's say I wanna keep this one marked as private. I don't want it showing up in my calendar for some reason. I can right click on that image and say hide photo. What that does is it's still in my library, but because I'm in the public space, it's gonna be moved to my private space or the everything space. So whenever I switch to public, that picture will not be visible. So this is great if you are, let's say you're a professional photographer, you have client photos, but when you look at your calendar, you really want that to display your life. You can hide those photos that you don't wanna have in your calendar that represents something that maybe doesn't represent what you wanna have on that calendar. You can also hide folders of images. So if I jump over here to my folders view, and let's say I don't want this particular folder test import from iPad to show up in my calendar, you can open up here the info panel. So open up the info on the right, scroll down, and there's an option here, don't show in calendar. I can turn that on, and that's going to hide everything in this folder from my calendar view. So that's a really helpful little tip there as well. Now, now that we have those things kind of set up and we know how to um, walk through our calendar, what we want to do is take a look at some of the by date quick filters, because this is another way to sort through your library and find things specifically by date. So I'm going to jump up to my all photos view in this case, and we're going to open up our quick filters. Now, if you go down here by date, you can make all sorts of different date groupings. And again, it doesn't matter what folder you're in, um, what folder the image is in, this is going to limit your library to the dates that you set. And you can be very, very specific here. So let's say you wanna find everything from your birthday over the years. So I can go here to by month. And for me, let's go ahead and set September. And I'm gonna close that back up. And then by day, I can go down and say, the 18th. And this is just going to show me pictures and documents and things from my birthday over the years. So that's really kind of a cool thing you can do. It doesn't have to be something sequential. It can show everything from all of the September 18th that you have in your library. Or let's say you want to find everything from every Christmas over the years. You can put in December 25th. Whatever works for you. It's also great for finding, let's say, anniversary pictures or other special dates your family might have. Um, if you want to from here, you can always say this is a quick collection too. So I've put this in here. I can go to the quick collections and save as a new quick collection and get back to these images anytime I want. And then anytime another year passes and another September 18th happens, those pictures are going to end up in that quick collection as well. So that's a really fun way to navigate using the quick filters. Again, using that information that's built into your photos. You don't have to do anything. It's already there. So you don't have to necessarily move things into physical folders to be able to organize by date. Now, the next thing that comes up is, what if the dates are wrong on my pictures? And this is gonna be really common if you're working on family history project, you're working with scanned images, things like this, you're probably gonna wanna change the date on some of those images. And some of them, you might not even know the correct date. 
So let's go ahead. I'm going to jump into a folder of images here in my library and go down to some scanned images that my mom sent me. So let's take a look here at this lovely Christmas 1988 picture. I'm lucky because it says Christmas 88. I don't think this was actually taken on Christmas Day, but I have over here in the date shown December 1988. When I first brought this into my computer, this was dated the date that I scanned this photo. It didn't have this date automatically here. So what you can do is you can click on the ellipsis here next to date shown, and you have several options for changing the date. Um, in this case, like I said, I didn't know the exact date, but I knew that it was in December of 1988. So I chose month and year, and then I was able to put in December 1988. So you can go ahead and change these things very, very simply. Now, you might bring in a whole back, batch of images, and you, this might be a project that you're working on that you need to do some research on. There's a very helpful category in here also called undated. If you scroll to the bottom of this list, you can mark images as undated, and that'll put them into a specific place in your calendar where you can use that as kind of a to-do list. So let me show you really quick how that might work. Let's go ahead and hit the back arrow here, and I'm gonna go back a level here in my organization. And I could say Commander Control A to select all of these images. Let's say this is a brand new folder of new scanned images. I could select them all and then go over here to that ellipses and go down and mark them all as undated. So that becomes then your to-do list. Well, where do you find your to-do list? That's over in your calendar view. So we're gonna jump back over here to the calendar view. And one quick tip here, anytime you wanna get to the top level of any of these views, you just double click the icon and it's gonna take you right back to the top level, in this case, the year and decade view. So from here, where are those undated photos? Well, all I need to do is scroll up to the very top, in my case, to the top of my calendar. There's my undated area. Everything that needs a date is here. I can double click in this, and then I can go ahead and start to do my research to add dates to these images. From there, I can grab an image. Um, think about this. I wanna say this was, that might've been my 13th birthday. So that would have been, let me think here, 91. So I let's go ahead and say, I know the date. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, all day. So I can do a timestamp, which is going to take you down to minutes and seconds. You can do that if you want to. In this case, I'm just going to do all day. And we're going to go ahead and put in a new date here. We're going to put in September. And we're going to call this 1991. And then we're going to change this to the 18th. Click Save. And now that picture is no longer in my undated collection. If so I go back here to the top level of my calendar, Scroll back up to 1991, there it is, and go down to September. There's that image, it now shows in the correct place on my calendar. So there are a lot of different ways that you can move these things around and get them to show up in the right place. Um, and so it's very flexible and makes it very easy to keep things organized without necessarily having to move things into specific folders. So the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is creating events on your calendar. So you might notice in especially some of my newer years here, I have these little dots that show up on my calendar. These are events and you can manually create them with a set date range so or a single date. Or if you have a folder that you've already organized that these are all the pictures from a specific event, you can simply switch, click a switch and mark that folder as an event. I'm gonna show you how to do both here. So what we wanna do is let's say go into 2024 and let's say, what do we got here? Find one that I haven't necessarily done here. So I've got most of these in here. Here's a good one. So let me find those pictures right here. All right, this is the day I went out to La Jolla. I took pictures of the different um, rocks and beach and all sorts of stuff. So what I wanna do is I wanna create an event for September 11th. And let's go ahead and click that plus button over here on the right. It's um, scoped by the, um, by the date. And I can change this to a date range and so forth. You have all those different date options there as well. But I'm gonna say everything that was on September 11th, 2022 is part of this event. And then um, we're gonna call this La Jolla. Um, 
These particular rocks in this area are called the potholes. So I'm, that's what I'm going to call this, La Jolla potholes. You can put it in your description if you want. You can add a category if you like. I'm going to leave that blank for the moment and close out of that. And then here's that priority I was talking about earlier. So when you have an event and you create an event priority, this has a big impact on how things are displayed in your calendar. So right now it's set to no priority, but if I click on that, I can say this is an event of the day, event of the month, of the year, or a life event. Life events are things like weddings and funerals and graduations and those really, really big life events. Event of the year might be, you know, that's your big vacation for that year, the thing that you really want to kind of focus in on. Event of the month might be, you know, a day trip you took somewhere, and then event of the day might be, you know, it could be just, like I said, in this, in this instance, event of the day fits because that's kind of probably the best thing I did that day. Um, and you also have the option here with scoped by date or by folder. And this is what Miley looks at to create the event or to put images in there to find them. This is going to be one scoped by date. We'll do a folder one next, and then I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now we have one here called La Jolla Potholes. If I go back on my calendar, you'll see that I now have that little dot and that name. And if I click on that name, it's going to jump me straight to that event so I can go ahead and view all of the pictures from that. While we're in here, once you're in this view and you have the info panel open, there's one more thing in here that I'd like to show you. And that's this event filter. I like this one a lot because it lets you limit what's showing in this folder for your event or in this particular grouping. And I like to only show my best images and events, and that's typically going to be my four and five star images and my pics. So let's go ahead and click on the event filter here. And this is based off, again, those quick collections. And I have one for my four and five stars and flagged images. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And if there are any of those images in this filter, in this grouping, the next time I go in here, so I'm going to go ahead and go back out, go back into it. And there we go. We have one image in this collection that I marked as a four star. So now all those pictures are still there. They're just being limited by this event filter. I can always clear this and then come back. Now, as far as that cover image, that's the priority for what you see in your library. That's what's happening right here. And you can change this. So I can go ahead and click that, find an image that I want to represent this particular collection. So let's say I want that one to be the representative. I can click choose. And then that's going to also take priority in this collection. So that's a really great way to categorize different life events on your calendar and be able to easily get to them. Now, one other way to do this is by marking a specific folder as an event. And this is really quick and easy. I'm going to go over here to my folders view and I'm going to go into my main photo library here. Let's go into 2023 and on May 15th, I went to Mission San Diego and I took some really pretty pictures of this gorgeous historical mission. Now, I want to make this into an event on my calendar. All I need to do is open up the info panel. If you don't have it open, click that little info button and then scroll down. And here's a toggle for show folder as calendar event. I can go ahead and turn that on. And now when I go to May 15, 2022 on my calendar, let's go ahead and go to the top level, 2022. And I can look over here on the right, and here's that same folder that was created as an event. Now I can click on that, and I can say Edit Event. So let's just say we want to call this Mission San Diego. Maybe for the event, we don't want to have the date in there. This doesn't change the folder name. This is just changing the description for the event. You can add your categories if you like. Again, priority, I'm going to say Event of the Day. And this one you see here is scoped by folder and then it tells you which folder it's referencing. So let's go ahead and hit save. And now let's go ahead and click into that and say, see photos and files in this event. Again, once more, I just wanna see the best pictures from this event, so I'm gonna to go to my event filter, choose the four and five stars and flagged, go back out of this once, and then we're gonna go back into it one more time, that just tells it to refresh. And now it's only showing the best images from that particular day. And that's going to be my four stars. You can see four star. This one has a flag. So anything with a flag or a four and five star is going to show here because I have that event filter on. And I can clear that and turn that off anytime. So that's the basic ways to create events. Now, I know talking about events, we could probably make an entire coffee break out of this. Um, I want to go ahead and 
switch gears here and jump to any comments and questions people have, and then we can see where things are at. So let me go ahead and grab that comments here and jump in to any questions. Yeah, Lori would be the first one. Which one? Lori at 1143. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you ever noticed in using month and year that they show up in random days and month year instead of all on the first day of the month. So that can be because you have um, set those fuzzy dates. And I am looking to get some clarification on how Milio takes those fuzzy dates and pops them into the calendar because let's say you choose a month and a year. I think that it should show up on the first day of that month if you go into the calendar, but I'm not entirely sure what the logic is. So I do have a note into our lead developer to find out what the logic is there to kind of pin that down. Once I have that, I'll go ahead and add that to our product manual so you guys can reference that, that information. But it I usually has to do, go ahead. I, yeah, like I have a, when I'm trying to redate like a front and a back of a photo and mm -hmm. it's a fuzzy date, they'll end up on different dates. Yeah, I've seen that happen too. And I think it's just trying to spread it out so you have a full calendar, but it's, I'm not sure quite what the, the rationale is behind that. So once I have more information, I'll let you guys know, but I am looking into that. <laughs> All right, next question here. What happens in a, if an event covers two years, like a vacation for New Year's? So it's gonna have a little bar that shows on your calendar over those dates. Go ahead and go back and find something like that here. Um, let's see here. So if I go into New York, you can see here for over a month, this Central Coast trip here was part of September and October. So it just has a little bar that goes across and that's to visualize that it's going across multiple dates. If it was going across multiple years, that same bar would show up when you're in the year view, in the decade view, to indicate that same passage of time. Mm -hmm. All right. So Madeline says, I see your calendar goes back, it's back to the 1880s. Mine only goes as back far to as 1920. How do I change this? So it just, is a matter of putting things onto your calendar at those dates. Um, one thing to know when changing the dates on images, let me go ahead and go up to my top here. I'm just gonna go ahead and, if you haven't done it before, you can grab that little handle. So as you start scrolling, you can grab that and scroll much faster. Let's go ahead and go into my undated and let me grab, I don't have anything super old right here, but let's grab this one of my grandfather. And if I go in here and I wanna put in, let's say a year, and this only scrolls back so far. Once you have a year up there, I'm gonna go ahead and just save that. You can save it as 2024, but then you can go ahead and click into it once that's been changed. So this is this is not the easiest thing to do, but let me go ahead, I'm gonna save this to 2024 and click save. That's gonna jump it out of there. From there, I have to go find that photo. So I know that one's been tagged. Let's go ahead and go to my people view. And grab this. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to my grandfather. One moment. Do you know if there's a, um, a feature request to put a search, like for people search on that screen? It's actually coming. Down to them. Okay, cool. We've got it. We've got it already on the roadmap and it's, it's coming. So, yeah, you'll be... Happy to know that that's going to be implemented in the not too distant future. All right, so where's the one that I put 2024? We should be in here by date. Let's go to more, sort by date created. So we can change that. I know I changed one of these. I've got multiple of them in my library. They're different resolutions come, that had come in from different sources. All right, let me just try a different one here. Let me grab one here. This one here I also have marked as undated. We can go ahead and change this to year, change it to 2024 and save. That changes the date format. And from there, I can go ahead and click into this and I can type in, let's say 1880. It's not the correct date, but I can type that in there that now has that 1880 date. So you have to change the format first and then you can type it in. Just make sure you follow the exact format that's there 
already in the box. And you can go ahead and manually switch that back to something later than what the little scroll wheels let you. I'm going to go ahead and move that back to undated, though, so I don't <laughs> completely mess up my library. All right. So that hopefully answered that question. And Jennifer says, can Miley auto populate photos into folders by date? For example, if I add my husband's iPhone that contains 15,000 photos, can Miley automatically sort them into separate folders? Or do I, um, then all I would have to do is review each folder and rename as necessary. Yes, there is an auto organize feature in Mylio. Um, it's a little bit complicated to use. It does work. But if you go here into a folder and I'm just going to go in here to do this one. There's only one picture here, so it's not really going to do exactly what you want. But you can go ahead and right click on an image and maybe it's on a folder. So we go back one level and more, more folder actions. And it used to be right in there, auto organize folders. Where did that go? Let's see here. I wonder if that got taken out of the app. Organize folders, it should be right there. Let me try a different folder. Let's see what we can do here. Let's, more folder actions. Scan for changes. Interesting. Yeah, it used to be under that more folder actions. So let's see here under organize. Organize folders. I'm going to have to look into that a little bit further. It used to be in there. Um, another way to do this and um, might actually be the easiest would be to go to your all photos view. Go ahead and close up this here by date. And to start with, let's say you want to do this for an Apple Photos folder. So let's go into Apple Photos. And then you can go down. That's so it's only showing me my Apple Photos images. And then go down by date. And let's say we want to organize these by year. I can open up by year, go into the 2020s, pin 2024. And then I can go ahead and select all. So Command or Control A, select all, right click, and move to folder. And that's going to let me choose a new location or create a new folder to put those in. So if I already have a 2024 master folder, I could then go into that 2024 folder folder. Let's go ahead and go down here to 2024. I could even create a new folder in here if I wanted to say new folder 2024 iPhone photos and move those in here. Um, so that might be another way to do this if they've taken that auto organize folders out of the app, I'm going to have to research that a little bit more because it's not where it used to be. Angela, that's a great question. Auto, yeah, yeah, it's auto organize under spaces. Oh, you know what? That might be why I'm not seeing it, is because I'm not in the everything view. I think right. that's exactly right. It's not under spaces, but you have to go into spaces. And because I'm in the public view, it's not letting me do it. If I go into everything, I bet you it's going to be there. Um, I don't want to go into my everything view because there's stuff hidden in my library that I want to keep personal. But if you go into the everything, then you should be able to right click on it under more folder actions and then see that auto organize folders or go up here to organize and organize folders. And there is more information about that in the manual. Thank you, Lori. I was wondering Angela, why that disappeared. <laughs> Angela, quick go question ahead. on moving things from Apple Photos or from the uh, iPhone photos. Does it permanently uh -huh. move from those folders in my Leo to the uh, the the year folders that I'm moving them to, um, and it doesn't uh, refresh when my phone or Apple Photos reconnects with uh, my Leo. They're they're moved out of that folder permanently, right? So they're moved out of that folder permanently, but my Leo still is aware of them, so it's not going to re-import them. Okay, so and it doesn't change anything in your Apple Photos. You have to actually since the Apple Photos connection is a one-way connection. So once they're in with once they're in my Leo photos, if you have a vault, then moving and changing anything around is not going to affect your Apple photos. Right. So on my phone, the photos would remain, uh, but in the Apple photos folder in my Leo, they would be gone and put into correct the folder. OK, great. Thank you. Yeah. And as far as the, the, the other question specifically is you can choose a specific You can go into Apple photos. You can choose a specific device. So let's say I just want to move things on my iPhone. I can go ahead and take the main Apple Photos folder out of there. Just choose my one specific phone. So if you have devices from multiple people in your family coming into that Apple Photos folder, you can do this with one specific um, device as opposed to 
the entire Apple Photos folder. All right. So um, Dawn's asking about the colored dots in my events. How do you set that? That's related to categories. So if I add a category to an event, so let's go ahead and go back here to my calendar. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll back to modern stuff. And we can go back here to 2022. You'll see that La Jolla Potholes is gray. And that's because I didn't add a category to that. So if I go ahead and click on that and say edit event, scroll down to categories and click the plus button. I can then choose one of my categories. And if I have a color associated with that category, that dot then becomes that color. If you're curious to see what colors you have associated with different categories, you can click on the pencil icon. That takes you into the category editor where you can change the colors that are associated with different categories. So um, let's go ahead and say, let's call this one fun. I can click on that and I can choose a different color. I can change the priority of that in my list. I can change the order. Um, but for now, let's go ahead. I'm going to click out of that, choose fun and apply and save. And now that has a green dot. And when I go into 2022 in my calendar and into that La Jolla potholes, there it now has a green dot. All right. Um, Michael saying a refresh button might be nice. Um, that's a great idea. That's one of those things you could pop into the feature request section of the forum. Um, the way Milio works is that it, it really does try to manage how much resources it's using. And if it's constantly trying to refresh, um, that can actually use up a ton of resources, which is why sometimes it takes going out of a view and back into a view to get it to refresh. But I agree, a refresh button would be nice. Um, Angie's asking, can you change the thumbnail pic of people in the people tag? Yes, you absolutely can. So let's go into my people view. And let's just stick here with my grandfather. Let's say I want to make this image here the cover photo. All I need to do is right click on that image, go down to set cover, and choose people. And that would change the cover photo for his view in my Leo. All right. Um, let's see here. When you add family members and faces, do they all sh do they show in the, show in the all show all do they show in all the faces related? Um, not quite sure. I understand that, but there's not a way to see to like visualize the relationships with, pe with people. So over here on the right, if I go ahead and let me just deselect, go ahead and click on the actions, select none you'll see that I have this relationship section. This is not gonna show um, the faces of these people, but they are connected. So I just, it's a more of a visual representation of who's related rather than it's not, it's not linked up yet. It might be in the future. Um, Robert, it says, I might think you might be, need to be in the everything space to organize folders. You are absolutely correct. All right. And Robert asks, what are the pros and cons of using folders versus albums? That is an excellent question. And it's one of the things that people often get hung up on when they're first getting started organizing their libraries. So when we go into the folders view here, what we're looking at is the actual physical folders that live on my computer, on my hard drives. And anything I do in my Leo directly affects what's happening on my hard drive. So when you bring things into Milio, they're not just in Milio. They are actually on your hard drive. Milio just looks at them where they are. So these are actual physical locations where my pictures live. And as I organize, pictures can only go into one folder at a time. If you want a picture in multiple folders, then you have to duplicate it and you end up cluttering up your library. So think of it like a filing cabinet. If you have a piece of paper, this is your filing cabinet. The, the piece of paper can only go into one folder at a time. Now with albums, that's virtual organization. And this is infinitely flexible in how you want to group things together. This is like using um, like an iTunes or Apple Music playlist where you can take a song and you can put it into many different playlists. This is the same thing with your photos. Any one photo can be in multiple albums at once. It doesn't take up any additional space. It doesn't duplicate them, but it lets you view them in different ways. So. What I like to say is with uh, folders, that's why I like to organize my folders typically by date. I have some exceptions in there for sure, 
some things that still need to be organized, but my main organization is by date. And then when I come into albums, this lets me kind of group things in a lot of different ways that make sense to my brain. And what makes sense to my brain may or may not make sense to yours. But here's a few examples. Um, I belong to a camera club and my camera club has competitions every month. So I have an album specifically for the camera club and I have one for every year. I can go here into 2024 and I can see what I've entered every month, what I've entered in the quarterly competitions and what had, because each of these images is juried, which ones were accepted by the judges. So I can go in here and this is not duplicating anything on my hard drives, but it lets me visually organize them in a very um, clear cut way that makes sense to me. Um, another great way to use albums is if you want to put together something special for, um, let's say, a special occasion. So I did this one here, mom and me, some pictures of my mother and I that I sent her for Mother's Day. Um, I also put together a slideshow when my husband retired from the military. So I, here's pictures from that, and then I made this into a slideshow. So there's a lot of different ways you can use these to put together things that are meaningful for you. I've even used it to group together pictures for different remodeling projects, things in my photography portfolio, lots and lots of different ways that you can use this. Um, and that's really the big difference between folders and albums. Fold folders are your physical storage. That's your computer, your hard drive, and Miley, you're looking directly at those sources. Albums are virtual. Think of it like a music playlist. So hopefully that um, clarifies that for you. I see that Mark has his hand up. Let me go ahead and answer Mark's question. Yeah, it, I think it's important to note here, Angela, um, I know there's been a lot of requests in the feature requests. I don't know where it is in the queue, but it's very easy to move photos from folder to folder. Um, in fact, that's the way you should do it rather than doing it on your disk. Let, let, let Milio manage your your, your Absolutely. Picture. But one thing that's an advantage to photos and events is you can drag and drop into folders using the, the left navigation there. You cannot mm -hmm. drop into albums. So to move things into albums, you basically have to pick the ones you want, right click, and then point to where you want them to. Um, that That's probably, at least for me or anyone coming from a different system, that's probably the most important thing to be aware of. Yeah, definitely. Um, we are going to have additional navigation options for that type of stuff in the future in other areas. So right now we have that like folder tree navigation here under the folders view. Got this guy here. And then you can go ahead and take a look at your folder list. We also now have that in the map view where you can take a look at your different locations. And that is going to be coming also to albums and so forth. Now mm -hmm. drag and drop might be a little bit more limited. Um, the other option you have for drag and drop, which I actually really like, I use probably more often, is to use the MyLeo clipboard, which is kind of a hidden feature. If you don't know it's there, you can grab a picture from the grid and just drag it down to the bottom of the screen. And that's a temporary holding area for things. So you can grab multiple pictures. So if you're going through a folder and you just want to grab a bunch of images, you can go ahead and put them there. You can then switch views that stays there. So we can go ahead and let's go into like travel. I can then grab these images down here and just drag, drag them up here and drop them into whatever album that I want. Yeah. So that's kind of a fun way to do that too. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit clear on that and then it goes away. So just kind of a little hidden thing there that you might not know about. Pretty sure Mark knows about it though. He's been using Milo for a while. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, we've got the feature requests, there we go. Um, so a clarification here, what I meant about the people related is if I have my mom in my list and then go look at her face, will I be listed as her daughter? Only if you add, add that in there or you they, that you downloaded that information from Family Search, it's not gonna automatically, if you add a relationship in one family member, it doesn't automatically populate other related family members. Um, that's something that might happen in the future, but for now, that is not possible. All right. All right, we already looked at changing the thumbnail pic of the people tag. Um, let's see, will you show how to man manually add a photo to the map? Sure, I can absolutely do that. Let me go ahead and find something that we can do that with. 
typically for me, that's going to be my older images that I haven't yet added that information to. So let me go back to the 2000s. And this was when I was taking pictures with digital camera, but I did not have, well, iPhones didn't exist yet. And um, yeah, so I didn't have it. A lot of these pictures have not been tagged so far. So let's go ahead and go into one of these and let's check it, check this out. Let's go to Tarmina. This is in Sicily. And here's a bunch of images. You can see they don't have a little badge on them that shows that they have GPS information. So what I can do is I can do a command or control A to select all of these images and then scroll down to the little map, the place section here. Now, to make this a little easier to work with, I'm going to click the button here on the side to expand that, make that bigger. You can also grab this little um, margin here and also make your map bigger that way. From here, I'm gonna go up here to find a location and type in Taormina. And that's in Italy, let's see. Yep, Taormina, Italy, Messina province, perfect. And that's gonna go ahead and jump me there onto the map. So there's Taormina and I can even zoom in a little closer if I need to. Let's see here. Let's see if I can fig remember exactly where these were. You know, I'm just gonna drop it onto the middle point of the town. And then I can go back over here to my grid, click and hold to drag those images, and then drag and drop them onto the map. And then go ahead and hit the check mark. And those now, you see they have the badge that says they have GPS coordinates. I can then close the map here on the side, adjust my margin, and then scroll down and see what information was added. And I can edit this if I need to. So that location shown, I can go in here and I can just delete that because that's not necessarily correct. Click save, but that keeps the coordinates, that keeps this, oh, and that should have gone away too. I think it's just reading off those GPS coordinates because that then becomes also searchable, but you can change and update these things if you need to. Um, so yeah, that's how we do that. Very, very simple. So let's see what else we've got here. looks like that was the last question I see. Is there anything else that I missed? I think you got everybody. All right. Um, Robert says, let's say an album has a thousand photos and not sure what the and is, but it can certainly have a thousand photos. I don't think there's any limit to the number you can have in an album. Now there are I believe limits to the number of pictures you can have in a shared album. So if you go and you wanna create a shareable link to an album from Milio, I think there might be a limit there. I don't remember off the top of my head what that limit is though. But you can certainly in Milio, I don't think there's a limit to do that. Um, okay, he had some follow up here. You wanna choose the best 50, make a new album or mark them. Um, that's completely up to you. So if you have those images marked inside the album, you can always go in use those quick filters. So let's go ahead and go into an album. And let me find, oh, let's see here. Find one that I wanna do this with. Cause most of these have already been pretty well called, but let's go ahead and grab this Valentine's day one. And let's say you go through and you add four and five stars or you add flags to the images that you like the best. You can always open up quick filters here go into the by rating label and flag, and then just show those ones that you have picked. And that's going to just filter this down, hide those other ones temporarily. And then when you wanna go back and see everything, you can either click that pill at the top or just click the X next to filters and it brings everything back. So it's completely up to you if you wanna make a new album, that's fine, but this is I think an easier way to do that. All right, I think we covered everything. So I wanna, Thank you guys all for joining me today. This has been a lot of fun, a lot of great questions. And I hope the topic of today in organizing your library by date was helpful, that you maybe learned a few new, new little tips and tricks of navigating those options. If you have any other questions, feel free to message me on the community. Um, I am gonna be out most of next week, but um, Lori is gonna be around so she can answer questions. And if I see you comment on something in the community, I'll definitely be checking in. Otherwise, we'll see you again the following week for our live Q&A, the Ask Angela se session, and for Coffee Break the following week. So I want to wish you guys a wonderful weekend, and get out there, take some pictures, make some memories, and we will see you next time.